Geek Citadel. Welcome to Bullet Points, where I list what I liked and disliked about a game, so you can take my list, compile it with others, and see if you want to rent, buy, or watch the game on YouTube. Arnold goes on a trip with his father, meets a pretty young girl, and soon finds his deceased father lying dead at his feet. He grows up into a roguish young man with the fondness for getting himself into trouble. His bad boy ways catch up with him as he is tossed into prison after he is framed for murder. Coincidentally, he is placed in a prison with the man who served with his father as an assassin. With this new knowledge, he takes on the role his father once held and starts on his path to revenge. Paris is beyond gorgeous, and this is easily one of the most beautiful games I have ever played. The detail of each building is superb. The increased number of civilians are what truly steal the show, with over 100 plus NPCs crowding the streets and causing havoc. Each of the main characters are painstakingly detailed and have accurate and convincing facial expressions to match. This is easily the best looking and detailed Assassin's Creed title to date. I always thought for a game that was all about stealth, Assassin's Creed had one of the absolute worst systems for doing so. Someone using the Animus has played a little bit of Splinter Cell because Arno has finally learned what other assassins haven't, how to sneak around and properly use cover. It isn't perfect by any means, but at least the options have expanded significantly. Unity makes sure that you don't ever have to worry about running out of things to do. There is so much content that exists in the game that it can be a bit overwhelming at first. Once that map opens up and each of those quests and collectibles appear on the screen, you'll wonder if you will ever complete it all. I've been dying for an Assassin's Creed to allow for some true cooperative play. Unity does a great job at setting up missions for up to 4 players or allowing them to free roam and take on the world with their pals. My only problem with cooperative play is that it's limited to a certain amount of missions. You can't play the story at all. What would an Assassin's Creed game be without bugs? From people sinking into the floor and regularly popping into view to odd textures appearing in the distance. This is basically a beta test that was given to the public. You are a beta tester. They didn't tell you you were, you paid $60 to be one. I have a GTX 980 and this game has all sorts of issues playing the game past the high setting. The frame rate sporadically dips from 60 to 45 during cutscenes or anywhere there are tons of people standing around the city. Unity was clearly designed for a graphics card that will only appear when we get warp drive technology. It makes it a pain in the ass to configure for both looks and performance, and the random fluctuation of frame rate can get in the way of the experience. The PS4 version on the other hand is filled with muddy textures and basically becomes a slideshow in most areas. This actually impacts combat and movement responsiveness which made it harder for me to parry attacks. The game had the nerve to freeze up in empty areas as well, while still sporting all of the buggy issues mentioned on the PC version. The console version of Assassin's Creed Unity is an absolute mess. The plot relies on the tried and true revenge trope and a lot of convenient moments so that Arno can kill people. Unlike the previous games in the series, assassinating a Templar figurehead will emit a wave of memories for Arnold to pick up with his ESP or whatever godlike ability he possesses. The problem is that for some reason the story is actually led by his sudden visions and the meanderings of the assassins running the Animus from the outside. It lacks its own essence in the series and that's probably due to the multiplayer focus. The story outside of the Animus highlights the assassins finding a random hacker and asking him to help them beat Templars. He has no choice but to help them of course, and that's the whole backstory. You play a random guy who has to stop the Templars from stealing history. I feel like I'm playing a random episode of Carmen San Diego or something. Nah, on second thought, that would be cool. Assassin's Creed games are notorious for ignoring the problems with this automated navigation system. In fact, Ubisoft promised that Unity's climbing system was overhauled for the next generation. Let's make our way down using Control Descent, one of the new additions to navigation in ACU. We have completely overhauled navigation, allowing you to plan and execute exactly where you want to go. If by overhaul they meant they added some pretty animations and kept the awkward loss of momentum issues, I'd agree. Anyone expecting quick and fluid animation as shown in the E3 video will be sorely disappointed. There are a few changes that have made the life of an assassin much harder. Enemies strike with a bit more precision and can kill an undergeared assassin in one or two shots. Other than that, the combat remains strikingly similar to previous games in the series, and in some ways, it takes many a step back. Arnold can get hit while trying to finish animations or fail to properly lock on a target to attack someone at his back. He will often get stuck on things while he's attempting to fight, and the overall feel of combat feels slower and less refined. 
It looks bland in comparison to games like Shadow of Mordor, which proves that sword combat can be fast, fluid, and visceral. Assassin's Creed Unity has a collection of content within the game that cannot be accessed without other apps. You have to download the companion app and sign up for the Initiate's website to access certain chests in the game. Which is a shame because most of these functions don't even work properly as of release. As it stands on the very first week of release, Assassin's Creed Unity is a technical mess full of bugs and performance issues on every platform. When you can get around the frame drops and the glitches, the gameplay doesn't make great strides to improve on the tried and true formula. Assassin's Creed Unity earns a fans only from Geek Citadel. This franchise has taken a spiral due to the lack of attention paid to creating a working game. The most volatile part of the problem is when well-known video game journalists like IGN, Kotaku, and many more don't let us know that these problems exist. They wait until we've all started boohooing after we purchased the game, but they have clearly had their hands on it for a week ahead of schedule. And then right after the game releases, they want to make an article saying, you should stop buying games early so they can fit into the mold. No guys, you should have created an article stating that this game is awful before release. I know a lot of these so-called video game journalists are afraid to lose the free games they receive from companies, yet people on YouTube go out of their way to buy a game, play it, and create a review without a handout from publishers. If we can take our time and do that without fear of being blacklisted by these companies, why can't GameSpot, IGN, and Kotaku? They get paid to do this stuff, so where is the journalistic integrity when we need it most? Publishers also think they can just push a game out the door because it should be released by now. That's an easy way to push garbage onto us people who are paying for these games. It's an unforgivable practice to ship a game as retail in such a broken state. Assassin's Creed Unity is a game that I want to like, but the more I try to play it, the more the flaws hold back my experience. For a game branded as a full release, it absolutely feels like a game that belongs in early access. Unforgivable. For more Geek Citadel plays and reviews, check us out on YouTube, Dailymotion, and GeekCitadel.com. Also, for the PC lovers, join our group on Steam Curator. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.